What a beautiful day it is. Oh my goodness. I had to take the mister out. And the mister, he is just loving this. Boy, oh boy. Oh yeah. He is loving today. He loves to lay up there on the mat. Oh, mister, you like it out here, honey? You loving it? Oh yeah, you can't keep a cat inside. I say don't leave a rabbit in a um, cage. Absolutely not. They need to run around and you gotta take your animal outside. Cause even if, yeah, okay, they get to stay out you know, in the house. But if you get one as a baby, please train to go on a leash like this. Look at it, he loves it. Oh, he's all dirty like a man. Oh. So, um, yeah, they, they need, they need the, to see the light, to experience the trees and the different kinds of weather, not just by the window, but be outside in it, you know, if you don't want to. You know, I highly suggest, if you don't, like me, I don't let him out by himself. No way. I care about him too much. We don't live in a place where you can just do that. There's a lot of cars around up the street. There is a ton of animals, like crazy. Yeah. So let him explore. Let him feel the sunshine. It must be healthy on the bones, you know? Mister, you having a good time, honey? Hey, everybody. I'm waving with my finger at you. <laughs> oh, he's all dirty now. Are you a dirty boy, mister? Are you a dirty boy? Oh, he loves it. You love being outside, huh? Hmm. Listen. I'm hearing seagulls. I've been seeing them over here. What a great noise. Oh, that and the smell of seaweed <gasps> and the roaring ocean. Oh, that's where I need to be one day. Don't know how. I don't know if I could ever leave here. I just love my home. I do. But I don't know if it was a really great deal. And later on, I'm getting really old and I can't take care of all of this anymore. Then perhaps, perhaps I would live me and Steven always wanted to live on a lake. I want to live in the ocean, but we talked about how we would live on a lake. So we would have, you know, little boats and things for the you know families to come over and, and stay with us and have fun. You can't really do that on an ocean. It's too scary. Oh, mister. Look at him, mister. Look at him, look at him, look at him. He's going crazy. Oh boy. Oh boy, mister. Do you love it? It is so nice out, oh my gosh. So today I have to say goodbye to my friend, Christine. She's moving away so that her son can go to college. So I won't see her anymore like I was. So I don't know what I'm going to do. I get to talk to her every day still on the phone, but I don't know. She's gonna be coming over soon to say goodbye. Oh, I don't like it. She's my, my Jane, you know, Tarzan and Jane, she's Jane. Oh, he just did it again. He loves rolling around on the ground. Oh, mister. You love it. So I am listening to, I already went and saw this gentleman. He's a priest. Uh, it's all based on the rules for knowing God's will in your life and how to discern what spirit is actually talking to you. So luckily we have all this information from the people who have already gone to heaven who have made it. And that's the kind of you know, information you wanna know. So the thing is, he said the first rule is, um, so if you look up discernment of spirits, Father Cal, is it Callahan? Father Callahan? Why am I blanking out right now? Callahan, Callahan? Anyway, um, you will look up discernment of spirits. You'll see a priest, father, something rather. Uh, and he will listen to the first one. And the second one said, I think the first one he was just talking about it. And then the second one, the second episode, he said, um, you want to get to a place where you are in love with God and you know that God is in love with you. Like really get that settled. And that's rule number one, because you have to establish 
you know, falling in love with God, right? And wanting to live for him. And so, you know, I remember coming to God uh, when I was 28 and that's what it was. It was a total honeymoon. Oh my gosh. Like I was on the beach at night when everybody else was up at the beach boulevard and I was down by the water and I would just want to spend time with him. And I was just loving him and didn't want anything to do with anybody else really. And I just was in this massive honeymoon and and he was showing up all over the place in my life and it was just wonderful. And I would spend like early mornings, you know, watching the sunrise with him. So now um, I'm listening to the next one, uh, number three, to see what the next step is. Oh yeah, it's Father Timothy Gallagher, not Callahan, like hello. Okay, it's Saint Ignatius. That's who it is. Uh, Saint Ignatius's um, discernment of spirits. How do you know if, the, if it's the good angel speaking to you or how do you know it's the, you know, the demons talking to you and what signs they leave um, to let you know uh, who it is talking to you. Which is really interesting, isn't it? Because then you know, right? You know, it's like you might go to confession and then afterwards you're like, oh, I didn't make a good confession and oh, I'm just so hard on myself. And meanwhile, you did the best you could. And it's just like, you know, the accuser. When the good angel will go and give you a little sting to go and get you to confession, there's a big difference. And like, so there's another way like, so when you make a decision, for instance, right? You know, when you're really angry and you're like, that's it, I'm gonna, you know, not do this that I was going to do. And so he te he teaches you to not make any decisions when you're upset. Don't do any major decisions when you're upset. And that's logical, right? Does that make sense? Um, and so it, it has helped me a lot once I learned that. I was like, you know what? I should just calm down. Don't make any rational decisions, whether I'm afraid, whether I'm, you know, I have to be like sound minded in order to make this really good decision. You know, when you're constantly depressed, that it's the devil upon you because he is eternally depressed. And that's how you know, like, it's okay to be sad. Like, that's why I like, even though I lost Steven, of course it's upsetting. Of course I'm devastated. Of course I'm grieving. Of course I'm just, I can cry at the drop of a hat, but I know that there's no such thing as a sad saint. And meaning I don't want to walk around for the rest of my life, you know, completely depressed. You know what I mean? Like, that's not what Steven would want. That's not what I want. And it's not how God wants it. So I have to find uh, you know, rational thinking in how to press through this, how to, you know, look forward to seeing him again. Um, it's easier said than done, that's for sure. But, you know, you'd want to make sure you're not in this constant state of depression because then it's not you. It's, it's you being spurred on by the devil. So there's rules like this and there's many more. So it's really awesome to learn about them. So that way you're not fooled, you know, Mr. Kitty, are you relaxing over there? Every time you relax on the on the mulch, you get really dirty. You know, you're a hairy guy. You like it over there, Mr. Mister? Is that where you relax and you feel safe over there? Oh, my mister. Oh, my mister. I have a mister. You okay, Mr. Kitty? All right, honey, I love you. You're my mister. Huh. Wow, so that was very interesting. I've I've listened to the whole thing before, but I think I'm just going to have to keep on listening to the same episode over and over, take notes. I really want to master this because it's a lot of what life is about. And, you know, a lot of people, including myself, will be tormented and you don't even know why. You want to have a, a good handle on it so you can always be steadfast, you know, and predictable. So today he was talking about um, 
that when the good spirit talks to you, it's a good sting. And like he keeps on like gnawing away at, at your conscience to get you to do the right thing. Like you might have a thought, you know, you start with this guy and uh, his son is going to probably make his first Holy Communion. And then he's thinking like, oh my gosh, like he's going to probably ask me. You know, he hasn't been in church in 20 years and he's probably going to ask me, you know, why aren't daddy, why aren't you going? I got mama to come. And so, you know, and then so one day he's driving in the car and, um, there's no music, no phone use. And, and so now the good spirit is trying to break through and saying like, what kind of life are you, have you been living? What kind of life are you, you know, when you look 20 years back from today, where you're living now, you're going to be happy. And so he's trying to talk sense to him. And then what the, what the bad angel does is he throws images and delicacies and all this passions and, you know, of all the sin in his mind. So to try to, you know, tempt him and cause him to go the other direction. So it's really important to know how they try to get you to do or not do God's will, you know, because there is, this is a battle. And if you don't recognize it, one of the first ways uh, is that the devil tries to get you to believe that he doesn't even exist. Because if he does that and say you're one of them, then he's got you right where he wants you. And you might say, eh, that's all fairy tale. That's made up. There's no such thing. And then you're tormented and you're not really truly joyful and happy um, and peaceful. Um, you know, he's gonna, he's gonna get you. He's gonna get you. So we have a true enemy. Like my father used to say, if you could push away reality like this, like a curtain, you would see the battle going on for your soul pretty good so i'm gonna have to listen to that one again so so far i understand that a little recap here the first rule is to be in love with god you know let him be in love with you and so you really get that established and the other one is that the good angel stings you to get you to do God's will, where the other one makes you feel really bad, right? So the good angel doesn't make you feel bad about yourself. Like say you did sin, right? And you have to go to confession. Yes, you you should feel bad about that. But, but the good angel guides you to confession, right? Where the, where the bad angel will just accuse you. Look what you did. You're just horrible. Oh, look what you did. You're no good. Oh, now, now you're really in for it. You know what I mean? So there's a big, that's how you recognize like what's going on internally with you and how, what do you do next? Well, I go to confession. Now you go to confession. You make this really great confession. You do your, your honest best that you could do and you leave. And all of a sudden you hear, you didn't do a good confession you, that was lousy, you know, and then you, you, you know, and then he starts like really picking on you and making you feel worse. You feel like, oh my gosh, what was that? And then it leads you into more sin. That's how you know that was not the good angel because the good angel guides you back to God and his will. The bad angel does the opposite. It's always whatever, whatever the, so if you recognize what the bad angel is doing in your life, the good angel is always doing the complete opposite and vice versa. Oh, the birds are so beautiful right now. Mister, can you see the mister? Yeah, I'm standing out here and I'm like, wow, I got a lot of work to do on my property. I think I'll take one section, a small section, and just every day for a week, and I think I can get it all done. I used to do it all in one day, 10 hours it took me. And then I'd get on the electric uh, dirt bikes and I'd go for a very long ride up and down the street and in the yard, and it was awesome. Oh, that's when I was in my 40s. Can't do it now, nor do I want to. But, you know, I'm listening to the birds and it's just so wonderful. And I really have to make a way for this. I'm seeing the flowers. Look over here, it's a big mess. But I don't know if you can see way over there, it's all white little flowers. Yeah, things are really budding. So I gotta get the yard cleaned out and I have to get, um, I have to get vegetables planting. Oh yes, planted. I do, I, I wanna grow a lot of lettuce, a lot of lettuce for the rabbit's sake. Oh, I'm so sick of buying it. When I can just grow it, why not? Where's Farmer Smith when I need him? Oh, mister, look at you. Mister, what you doing? Get down, Mr. Kitty, get down. Mr. Mister, Mister. Hey. 
Mr. Kelly, what you doing? Mr. Kitty, what you doing? You look crazy over there. Mm -hmm. Gotta let him be an animal to some degree. You see the squirrel, mister? Look at it, it's all messy over here. That doesn't belong to anybody, I think the city actually. So yeah, the first thing I gotta do is I gotta go around and get all the sticks up. All the sticks, put them in a pile, then do one section at a time. This is nothing over here. This is where I dump all the leaves. So this nice, beautiful weather, it is inspiring me so much. Oh my gosh. So I'm gonna get, that's my goal is to get Sarah through to maintenance. And while she's doing that, I'm gonna come out here, work on my yard, fix it all up. And then when she's in maintenance, I'm gonna start my friend Christine will be gone, but I'm gonna go on adventures with my kids. I just am. I'm gonna pick a place. I'll just pick a place in another state and I'll say, you know, let's go and eat at that restaurant or let's go see that cliff or let's go see those woods over there. Or let's go like just for one little thing. That's what Mr. Fry used to do. He'd go look for like the dams and the rope swings and yeah, we'll just pick something online that's local and fairly local and just go investigate travel really far just to go to experience a cafe or like I said a waterfall or whatever you know I'm just inspired I am I'm gonna live my life you know don't be afraid oh, I don't know if you can hear the birds look at these high trees huh it's kind of scary Since I am recognizing it right now, it's almost three o'clock, especially on a Friday, but any day at three o'clock, we sing the Divine Mercy. And this is done on a rosary and it's very lengthy, but in my house, we only ever really just said the one at three o'clock. So I'll sing it with you. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved son our lord jesus christ in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world and then i always say eternal rest grant unto them o lord and let your perpetual light shine upon them and may they rest in peace amen